adding documents to your knowledge stacks is pretty straightforward. In the last video, I showed you how to quickly just add a file, and I really just dragged and dropped one in here. If you're curious as to which file types knowledge stacks currently supports, just always look at this list. We'll keep it updated with the file types that are supported. To add a new file, you could either drag and drop into here or click on browse files. As you can see in this folder right here, I have several different example files. So I'm gonna go ahead and add this PDF. And we'll see it added to the list for files right here. After adding a file, you see that there's a little clock icon next to that new file that was added. That just simply means it hasn't been processed yet or it hasn't been composed. You'll also notice the ellipses icon, which is the overflow menu. If a file hasn't yet been composed, these options aren't available. But since we previously composed a file, let's check those out. So we see several different options here. The first option being a link over to the chunks visualizer, which we'll go over in another episode. And then the next option is load mode. If you're an ORM subscriber, you'll have these options for different ways to load a file. By default, when you compose a file or recompose a file, it always goes from static mode, which is essentially Misty is gonna go off a cached version of that file when recomposing. The next option is dynamic mode. And what will happen with dynamic load is that if you compose or recompose a knowledge stack, Misty is going to look for the latest version of that file. So as long as that file is in the same path, it's going to pull the latest version. So if you have files that change every once in a while, then select dynamic mode because once you recompose the knowledge stack, it's going to pull the latest version of that file. That way it keeps your knowledge stack a little more up to date. The last option here is sync mode which if this is enabled and you have sync mode enabled for your knowledge stack, if the file ever changes, Misty's gonna detect that file change and that's gonna trigger a recomposition. So let's say the next time that Misty is launched and sync mode is enabled, it's gonna check that file and if it sees that there's an updated version, it's gonna automatically recompose the knowledge stack. This is great if you always want the information to be kept up to date, but keep in mind that this is going to be a little more process heavy because it's going to continually monitor to see if the file has changed. And if it changes, it's going to automatically recompose, which of course is going to take up some of your machine's resources. We'll go ahead and select dynamic mode and click on apply. And if it is in dynamic mode, you'll see this little circular arrow icon there. Okay, let's click back on the ellipses and check the other options. Uh, this next one is mark for reprocessing. So if it's marked for reprocessing, when you click on compose, it's only gonna compose the files that are marked for reprocessing, and it's gonna ignore the others during that composition. The next couple options are log temporarily or log permanently. If you select log temporarily, what's gonna happen is when you compose, it's gonna ignore that file during recomposition. And so it's more of a kind of temporary lock that you decide when it's locked or unlocked which is slightly different from the mark for recomposition. And then if you choose lock permanently, just be aware that if you do this option, there's no going back. You would have to create a brand new knowledge stack and then redo everything. Because what lock permanently does is it's just gonna lock in that vectorized database for that file permanently, and there is no undoing that. And you may see some files that are permanently locked, and that's gonna happen if you import a knowledge stack because at that point, we're going to assume that the files, the source files for that knowledge stack are on a different device and that you're basically importing the database, the vectorized database onto your device. So if you import a knowledge stack, they're always going to be locked and there's no unlocking those files. And of course, the last option is if you want to delete one of these from the knowledge stack, click on delete and it removes the file. OK, at this point, I'm going to click on compose. And what's gonna happen is it's gonna recompose this one because it's marked for reprocessing. And this is a new one, so it got processed initially. But now that both of these are processed, if I go back and click on mark for reprocessing and then click on compose, we're only gonna see that one that is marked for reprocessing actually compose. The other one, since it's already been composed, is not gonna be included in the recomposition. And of course, just a general disclaimer, I have two very different documents here. One is the Missy Studio documentation, and the other one is a research paper about pecans and their nutritional benefit. Obviously, these two files do not belong to each other, 
uh, contextually, they are very, very different things. So when you're creating your knowledge stacks, you want to be very focused with what is contained in your knowledge stack. That way you have the best information that you're providing to the model and not these separate things that really don't belong with each other and don't make sense to be in an alt stack. So these files are all added just for demonstration purposes, but I encourage you all to be very specific with what you put in your knowledge stack to make it as focused as possible. The next thing I wanna cover in this video is folders. So I'm gonna expand this section here. And then you can either browse your folders and then select them to add them here, or you could drag and drop them. But I'm gonna click on browse folders. And what I'm gonna do is double click on Sherlock, which is the collection of short stories about Sherlock Holmes. And then click on open. And then we'll see if I expand this, those files are included here. If you wanna see any files that are gonna be ignored for processing, click on show ignored files. In this case, it's all just text files, so I don't expect to see anything. But if you have a file in here, maybe one that starts with a dot, which isn't gonna be readily visible, Clicking on show ignored files will show those files that will be ignored by processing. And if you notice the ellipses icon on the far right, that simply is just a way to see that file within your file manager. Okay, at this point, I'm gonna click on compose again. And then we'll see that these two were processed and now it's going to the folder. And it's gonna process the files within the folder and add that to our knowledge stack. Now that the folder has been composed, let's go and click on the chunks visualizer. And in here, we'll be able to see how the different files were chunked. All right, so for the first one was a PDF. We could see that there was 22 chunks involved in that. And then these next set of files are all the ones that were in the Sherlock folder. So these are my Sherlock Holmes short stories. And we could go through and view how these were chunked. The chunks visualizer is going to be a very important interface that we're going to come back to often because this is the data that's going to be queried on and the results of that are going to be sent over to our model for context. So we want to make sure that the chunks contain the type of context that we would want the model to have when formulating the response. We're not going to go into great detail in this video, but this is something that I'm going to consistently come back to because of the importance of chunks as context that's sent to the models. And in the next video, I'm gonna dive a little more into folders and show you how you can ignore certain file types and subfolders with our Misty Ignore feature.